Hello, welcome to the Good Life Meditation for December 31st, 2021, our last day of the year. I do this every day to remember yesterday, forecast the coming day, and to remind myself of my objectives and principles. Let's begin. Yesterday was a, a good day, uh, it was a full work day. I achieved my objectives for the day. I uh, was able to uh, um, finish the year. It was my last day of work yesterday. Strong. Um, new job, new circumstance. I have uh, some pieces to pick up from some of the things that got scattered along the way in transitioning to uh, a new life uh, at the end of the year, which was harder than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of work, but it was good work, and it was a good, good, good endeavor. And I'll pick up those pieces. There's always pieces. Let's begin the good life. Seven objectives. The first of these is to be always ready to die. Second is to make good and effective use of time. Next, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. To cultivate good emotional reactions. To perform good actions. To recognize my true limits and true opportunities. Not just my own, but any any at all. Any that I might encounter. Or that others might be undergoing. Countering. And then last objective is to just do one thing at a time and do that thing slowly. No multitasking. Next, uh, let's do the principles. 30. The principle of war. To always be fighting against what I or anyone else proposes as true. <clears throat> Next is the principle of reason. And the sub-principles of honesty, <clears throat> objectivity, and doubt. Third is the principle of the homunculus. The idea that there's a little mortal inside my head, my consciousness, that is uh, going to die with me. Next is uh, the anchor hold, the idea that the homunculus resides on a little rock where the uh, storm and the wind and the tide weather away, and that one day that homunculus will <clears throat> be smothered by the sea or fall into it. And that'll be the end of that. Next is the home of good and evil, the idea that Right and wrong are not some eternal truth <clears throat> resounding through the universe, but instead <clears throat> are the opinions that we maintain and that we develop and maintain, acquire, grab onto and maintain, and that these are uh, written in chalk above our heads where the wind uh, blows and uh, change and time weathers. <clears throat> Next is the principle of purpose and the sub-principles of <clears throat> biology, virtue, and mission. The purposes that I've, I've accepted are to be a husband and a father, uh, to raise a child, get her into the next generation successfully on her own, to live a virtuous life, and to... Uh, endeavor after some purpose. My purpose is sharing the good life of outlining my book going alone. Next is the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces. Followed by the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature and it's helpful to uh, identify that and to live accordingly. Pirate right is next. The hypothesis that free will is an illusion. 
we can make any choice we want, but we could never have made any choice other than the ones that we have. Next is the principle of maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. We are mature when we are wise and strong. The social principle is next. We need each other, so it's good to be social. Public speaking is next. To use few words, carefully chosen words, deliberate words, and to never gossip. Temperance is the next principle. To control our consumption of all things, work and play, entertainment, food, drink, sex, everything. Just a uh, considered and controlled consumption of life. The three sub-principles there are suffering, simplicity, and apathy. Because we suffer when we deny ourselves what we want. And a temperate life is a simple life. And apathy helps us to uh, keep our equanimity, to maintain our balance in the uh, face of a temperate life. A temperate life. The next principle is <clears throat> the horror show, an acknowledgement that uh, life is chock full of utter horror. And the next principle is that which must be born, a reminder that we have to bear so much in life, just bear through it, stuff that we can't resolve and simply must carry until we're dead. <laughs> The sub-principle there is the hand on the tiller, keeping the boat steering straight. Next is the principle of distraction. We live our lives. No. The Feast of Ophel. The... Uh, circumstance that we find ourselves in when we get upset and spew that upset into the world for to share with everybody. Try to avoid that. That's the Feast of Ophel. Then comes distraction. We spend our lives distracting ourselves so we don't have to see the awful great indifference, which is the next principle. Then comes the best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else or be anywhere else or be doing anything else, but to be okay with just the circumstance that I'm by myself in now, at all times now. Next comes the path of wildness, a way upward and forward, into and through new life, especially where that path is uncertain. Next comes the risk of avoiding risk. The surface level risks of life are things like Security, education, family, etc. They're important, sanctioned by society, and for that matter, a little easier to get. Then there's the deep level risk, which is the risk of uh, not spending time to uh, find ourselves and uh, live a meaningful life beyond the meaning that comes with family, community, job, education, etc. It's tough to do both the deep and the shallow. Next comes uh, sin and damnation. And the seven sins in my life are credulity, an over-eagerness to believe, hope, which is just wishful thinking, desire without action, not coupled with action, faith, which is belief founded on an idea that belief itself is its own evidence. Authority, belief based on the charisma or seeming power of some person of authority. Dogma, belief based on the inertia, substance, and weight of uh, what has been written, what has been said, 
and what is tradition. And then uh, gossip, which is a great sin to talk about others as though they're not around. To talk about them in ways that we would not want them to hear. Next comes um, complete oblivion. When we die, there's no afterlife, apparently. There is no God to uh, set things straight. So we're left with a awful idea that uh, um, we better work on life now, our relationships now, and settle issues now, seek after justice now, because uh, there won't be a chance later. The great life adventure, the idea that we can have one or more marquee events in our lives that help to build our character and help us to form an identity and give us a story that we can hold on to and relate, a story to tell, which is my next principle, the, the uh, season of philosophy, which is just a time to compose thoughts and write them down or paint them or take photos or do dance or blog whatever you want to do just do it while the muse is speaking because she has a way of moving on next is the bullseye aim the reminder that we so often strive after the mark but usually miss by some degree then comes the uphill climb Steady, steady, up we go. Arena and utility, all these ideas are helpful in uh, facilitating the life that we want to live. Nothing is enough. The idea that sometimes Get better, we get along better without. Then finally, the principle of happiness or fun. A reminder to uh, enjoy life in the brief time that we're here. Not to just uh, work our way through it, but to have fun along the way. Something I have to remind myself to do every day. And I do. <laughs> okay, that's my good life meditation for today. The last one for the year. Let's forecast the day. And before I do that, one incident from yesterday. I forgot to rem relate. I was walking along in the evening. The dogs had been walked, but it was cold and drizzly, and they didn't want to stay out very long, so I brought them home. And I was I hiked by myself, so I got my hiking gear on, went for a hike behind the mountain, on the mountain behind the house. And on my way back, I was passing by a house, and an enormous dog charged out of the uh, porch area, barking. And you know how the dogs come in there, like their paws are like, ah, ah, ah. big dog, very aggressive, charged right at me. And the owner was uh, in the doorway there and just yelled at me, he, he won't bite. You know, that may be true. Still, I find it very... Uh, unsettling and upsetting that people do that, that they let their dog simply roam free like that, especially in a neighborhood where kids could be terrorizing the neighborhood on the, the idea that, that, that they, won't, they won't attack, they won't hurt anybody, but they sure will scare the crap out of them. Now, I had already pre-rehearsed this one because I had encountered that house before. And I had decided that that was the, the nature of that person, the nature of that dog, the nature of the neighborhood that I live in now. And that my reaction would be uh, to avoid this situation, to go around. So I, like I said, I've, I've seen that dog out before. And I've taken, I've crossed the street to go all the way around the other end of the street, which seems to work. This time I, I forgot. I didn't see it. And it got me. And I'm, I'm pleased with my reaction. I don't want to encourage or support the, guy, the guy's choice. I simply looked over at him, gave him a, a, 
a, a look that conveyed my disquietude and turned back and marched on. Um, I didn't get upset. I didn't lose my balance or upset my, um, my stride. I just carried on. In the moment, that seemed like the best thing to do. Like I said, I'd rehearsed it a little bit. <clears throat> I wasn't quite ready, ready to be ambushed. But I was, I was pleased with I was pleased with the response. Not, not so much that the response as much as I think Stilbo, the philosopher, would have been the Stoic, would have been proud of me. I kept my goods with me. I didn't I didn't uh, lose my crap. <laughs> Although it was scary. I conveyed a message to him, subtle as it was. I acknowledged the reality of the situation. And I carried on. The uphill climb. Lots of principles engaged there. So how about today? What does today look like? <clears throat> no work today. Pleased with the work that I did this week. It was a very good week. So I'm feeling <clears throat> good going into next week, which is an important beginning of the year. Oh, <sighs> excuse me. <clears throat> I, my plan for today is to take the dogs out for a walk now, to come back, make myself a cup of coffee, to sit down right here and read my book until the family gets up. I'll feed the dogs too and play with them a little bit. They like to be played with after they've been fed. And then after that, I'll wait for my wife to get up and then she and I will uh, make our way down to Irvine where we need to do some shopping um, oh, and we're going to have our Toshi Koshi Soba for New Year. Pick up her car and then come back and then celebrate New Year's. There's not much chance I'll be up at midnight. <laughs> you Miko will be, but I'll, uh, I'll wish everybody a New Year, Happy New Year's nonetheless. And I wish you a Happy New Year. All right, let's wrap up 2021 and get started with a new one. Take care, everybody. Be safe, but not too safe.